Guys, I got some really bad news. Um, Hannah left me today, so I'm gonna be filming this on my own. Hope this comes out pretty good. That's good. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, here it is. We have the sealer on it. She is uh, a little sag mark there in the sealer, but she's ready for paint. We finally made it. We're at that very pinnacle moment where we finally put some color on this fish. So today, we'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna do. Uh, airbrush, very important. Do your research. I can't tell you which one is the right one for you. Uh, you'll know as soon as you start using it. This is my very first paintbrush. I spent a couple extra coins on this one, figuring that this one was gonna work a little bit better. Uh, this is a dual action, which means as you push down and pull back, you can get a delivery system of more material. What I did on the first one is a little bit too gold for my liking. I like the fact that the fish actually looks a little bit more silver, so I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna need some satin white pearl. Um, it's gonna carry the underbelly, get a little bit of that glitter in there without making it look too cartoonish. Uh, I'm gonna go with some bronze gold. A couple other colors here, shimmering gold. We're doing kind of a blend. And then there's a sparkling gold. This is the one that really shows up bright. So if I'm gonna shoot this color, it's gonna be really, really faint. Bright silver, not much of that is gonna be used. All right, so identifying the areas that are gonna be the browns, maybe a little bit of blue hue in here. Um, if you look at a red fish, when you take them right out of the water, they have a little bit of blue right on that tail fin. These have kind of a, not really burnt orange, but a little bit of a, a, bit of a peachy orange to the tips. A lot of people will start with the underbelly. Um, I have no problem with that. I think that's a good idea. That way there I can blend in those spots over that white. As you can see, these little spots are gonna be in there. I just gotta put some color on them and let them uh, emphasize. Less is more, I've heard that a thousand times from a hundred people. Um, after I painted the first fish, I can't agree more. Reduce how much paint you put on. If you have to stop, soak it in for a little while, that's fine. So let's go with satin white pearl. And it just takes a couple drops. Now because this has a glitter in it, right after you shake it, put some in your gun immediately so that glitter doesn't float to the bottom. And you get a good amount of that in there. It's really fine, so um, make sure your gun is shooting the way you want it. I just shoot on the wood, it's fine. I'm gonna show you real close up here how this looks. So right in here is some of that original epoxy sculpt. That right there is just a real fine glitter. Start laying little coats of that over that. Now if you're saying, oh, I don't see the paint going on, that's because we match the paint color really close to the underbelly of this fish. And that's what I want. And I've got my gun adjusted so that if I pull back full trigger, I'm getting enough of that color on there for the areas that I'm painting. satin white pearl. These are water-based paint, so they're not gonna have too much fumes. That's why I'm not wearing a mask right now. I'm 
You'll notice I got this fish tilted back a little bit. That's so I can get in underneath a lot easier. Not have to do so much squatting down. And put a real light coat of this pearl down that main body line. Nice light highlight. Now you might not see it, but I do. There's a nice light mark of paint pushing right down that line. Probably see it now. I got loaded up here a little bit. I think that's good. Well, that's going to fade in after I shoot that other color on there. I'm also going to need some halos around these spots. So when I say halo, you're going to need some white. I'd rather shoot a little bit of that now. Try to hopefully get some of that in there. When you're doing color changes, it's a good idea to have a couple solo cups right next to you. You're gonna have to put some clean water in your gun, kind of purge it through. I like to just put a little bit, dump it out. Have yourself a towel and shoot some excess through the gun. So I'm basically just putting a little bit of water in here. Put the cap back on, give it a little shake, and then just shoot that into a rag. Run all that color right through it. Clear your gun. Pick your next color and move on. We're working from the bottom. We're going to work our way up to the top. We're going to fade that in as you see it now with that nice light color. We're not going to worry about the spots too much right now. I want to just start getting a base coat on the rest of that body. I believe that transparent brown is a good choice. Uh, if you shoot it lightly, it'll be good. It'll allow some of that tan to more chocolate brown of the scales that's left behind to come through. If you need that a little bit right in here, darken up those tips, give it some definition. A couple drops. This is going to be a real light application of this color because it's so dark. It has a little bit of brightness to it as well. So again, trust, test your trigger. This is a highlight color. This is not a main body color. These are about slow transitions. Fading from one color to the next is going to be the real difficult part for most people to learn. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of the bronze gold. So this bronze gold is very, very strong. I'm hoping by putting this bronze gold on, it give us something we can work off of for a base without getting too heavy of a color on this. This one here is called Shimmering Gold. Um, haven't used it yet, so this is the first time. And you guys will notice right now that the eye is still out. I have not mounted the eye. The, the eye is right here. I purchased that already. Um, I think those are only about $11, maybe 15 bucks for a pair. Um, and you order those based on 
the size. So you got to measure that eye socket. burnished silver on and everything looks dramatically different in daylight so using lighting like I am overhead fluorescent and a couple camera lights things change I open the door behind me let natural light in Lighter and lighter as we move down the body of the fish toward the belly. Just try to make them a little smaller. some of these scales that kind of got bleached out a little bit. When, uh, when we had it soak. See that color starting to come up a lot more now. Change. These are all the spots that I painted. These are the spots that need paint. Using my finger to come back in, just give it a little smudge. So it's such a light amount of paint on there anyway. It's not gonna be bad. I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna add a little bit of color in between those those uh, scales. Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, so what we're doing, we took a break. Last night I ended up doing probably about 50% of the paint, got a lot of the base coat on it. And today the intention is the cheek. We're gonna patch that up 
Um, last night when I got to putting color on it, notice how real smooth it was, lacks definition. So I've come up with my own way, I think, of uh, putting some definition back into it so that when we put paint over it, it's actually gonna look like the original uh, gill plate and some of the cheek and some of the definition, those real tiny, tiny scales that are in there. So uh, what I've done today is got the Dremel, uh, corded one. What I'm using is a very, very fine bit. Uh, so that bit is extremely fine. I probably would say it's a 30 seconds of an inch. And you look at the top of the fish here, this is so smooth. I mean, if we add paint to that, it's just not gonna look right. So what I've done is put a little bit of definition in this piece here that was patched previously. So with that being patched, I believe you can see it a little bit better there. Um, when paint gets over that, it's gonna blend in nicely with the rest of the head. Now, I'm gonna set up a little steady rest, something right here uh, for me to rest my arm to be able to do this. So we'll get going and uh, show you how I do that. Okay, so we, we uh, achieved the definition I wanted out of that. I'll get you in for a close-up on that. Hopefully you can see some of that definition. There it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add just a little bit of white to each of those scales going around. I use the same technique we used yesterday. I'm really slow, just highlighting each scale. And then we're gonna put the darker color throughout. A touch of like a light blue, almost like a satin. Let's see what we're going to use. It's interesting. Shimmering blue looks like white. So it's almost a silver. There's a weird blue hue to it. I think that's going to work well around the head. We know we need to put blue in the tail a little bit, so let's go down there and get... Right now, it's very rainbow color. You can see that yellow came back in there. Yellowish gold from this view. We're gonna tone these down a little bit. This is all very dark and it's too purpley for me. Even though it's a nice color, it's just not right for the fish. We still have a lot of work there, piece by piece. We are going to use the silver pearl, kind of lighten everything up, get rid of some of this, some of the blue. I want some of it to stay. Yeah, 
airbrush guns work the best when you shoot a small amount of paint. Um, shoot too much and it stays wet. Shoot too little, you're not going to get color. Shoot the right amount, it sticks, and you have a good result. It's a good idea when you're trying to add color to an area that you don't want the backdrop to catch the color. You use something to keep it from loading up paint on it. Okay, so from your perspective, it's probably very chrome. That's okay. Uh, we're going to start adding in a little bit of the deeper brown. Just add a little bit of this brown to each scale. until I get the desired look that I want. All right, everyone, so this is it. This is the completed fish. Um, I know I didn't finish this on camera, but you know, that's what happens when you end up screwing up some of your footage and then you end up throwing it away by accident. So here it is. Um, what I did was I clear coated it when it was completed. I did all the painting, um, all the colors, everything stayed the same. I haven't changed any of it. There's a couple things that I can see on it that I would wish that I had done a little bit differently before I set it on the driftwood. Um, but I do want to show you the back side of this, give you an idea of how I mounted it. So basically, if you look here, I drilled a couple holes in the driftwood. This is metal coat hanger. I just used a pair of metal cutters and snapped that, made a couple rods, and then slid those inside the foam and secured it that way. So it does have a little spring to it, but when it's sitting on a mantle or sitting on a bureau, it doesn't move at all. Um, you can see some of that stitching is still in there. And this is all the scales that were um, unfinished. And uh, my nice little knot. Again, I did not put an eye in this side because of the curvature of this fish. Nobody's gonna actually see that. Uh, but I do want to show some of the stuff that I did. And I found this piece of driftwood uh, just lying on the side of the, uh, the beach. So what I wanted to show you was some of those repair areas. I actually have an area here, all of that skull had a lot of patchwork done in it. Let me lean over. And all of these markings here, I did by hand. I used the Dremel. I think that's included in the video. If it's not, then um, I can go back and then give better description to it. There's a lot of clay work around the eye, and there's a little bit of a repair down here. And it's still sitting there a little bit gray, but not a lot of people notice it. What I did do differently on this fish was I painted the backside of each scale to try to give it some definition. I think what's lacking on most of the fish that I've done so far was the definition of the scale. And it's really hard to get that it's really hard to get that painted and do it properly. So, you know, I'm working on that, trying to make that improve. But the next fish that we have set up is going to be red snapper. And that red snapper is, I think a 32 inch red snapper that I caught last summer, still in the freezer. That video is gonna be coming. Uh, that's gonna take a little bit longer, I think, because of the size of it. And also it's the first fish that I've actually decided to paint that has actual color in it. So white, red, all that is going to be a lot different than what it's been uh, on these. Well, hope you guys uh, learned something. Hopefully it was somewhat entertaining. Sorry if I dragged certain segments out, but hey, that's me. And uh, 
If you guys do try this on your own, you want to mount one, take a picture and see if you can upload it or send me, you know, send me a message and let me know how yours came out. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks for watching guys and uh, hopefully we'll see you again on Red Snapper. Bye.